faster instructor Kenny Smith with Total Force Training Group. Alright, I'm setting up my computer now because uh, I've got some stuff I want to go over. I've got my notes up here. Uh, in light of the Boston Marathon bombing, I thought it pertinent, you know, there's plenty of uh, videos out there just on how to treat various injuries, but it shows yet again terrorism has come to the United States. I mean, it's one of those that's never really going to go away, so we need to be able to deal with it. But one of the big things that I see is a lot of guys, not just guys, but you know, people teaching trauma medicine, uh, look more for the gunshot uh, injury side of things, and that that makes perfect sense. I mean, think about it. When we go to a, most most people go to training schools, the vast majority of people go to gun schools. So if you're playing with guns, uh, someone's eventually going to get shot, be it in class or for real. Uh, either way, it still hurts. Uh, but we're going to look at uh, some of the stuff that might be going on in the event of an explosion, much like Boston. Now, I'm going to go ahead and be the first to say, I can't tell you how to treat a lot of this, but I have a feeling that somebody somewhere that sees this will. Uh, so I hope that to be the case. And I'm going to try and put some stuff out, and I'm going to try and get in touch with some people that can help me with that. Uh, no guarantees on that, but I'm working on it. Uh, first, we need to talk about two different types of explosion. explosions you'll see. There will either be a detonation, which involves a high explosive, or a deflagration, which is a low order explosive. High explosive is, I'm going to say it's a detonation velocity greater than 2700 meters a second or feet per second. I'm checking up on that right now. Detonation, explosive velocity ranging from 3 to 9 kilometers a second. So. All right, obviously that, that that's pretty quick. That's deck cord, uh, composition B, C4, TNT, uh, stuff like that, Emulex. There's all kinds of high explosives out there. Deflagration is a lower velocity uh, combustion or explosion, and that you see in black powder, uh, smokeless powder, things like that, um, some other compounds. But nevertheless... Um, what we're most likely to see is a low order detonation, which is a deflagration. So, anyway, and, and the reason for that is it's easier to obtain. Alright, but this actually has less to do with the explosives themselves and more to do with the injuries. But that being said, obviously, all of these injuries will be multiple times worse and more of them with a high order detonation. And the reason for that, obviously, more detonation velocity, more gas generated quicker more pressure, more pressure equals more uh, fun when it gets angry. So, uh, primary injuries are typically caused by overpressure or a shock wave. Uh, that tip, those typically affect the parts of the body that are filled with gas or air. So you see a lot of lung injuries, a lot of gastrointestinal intestinal injuries. Uh, blast lung, which I'm not mistaken is a uh, type, a form of collapsed lung. But uh, anyway, you see a lot, a lot of hemothoraces, uh, pneumothoraces, uh, pneumothorax. We know how to treat. Uh, that's why that needle's in your trauma kit. If it's not, uh, you, not everybody needs the needle. It does require advanced training to learn how to do that. Um, and you won't practice it on anybody because it's too dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Uh, pneumothorax is the lung filling up with air. Uh, hemothorax is basically the lung filling up with blood or, or the thorax itself, not necessarily the lung. Uh, but you get, the, and basically, those two put pressure on the lungs and reduce their capacity. Now, I'm not a doctor, so this is just kind of roughly throwing it out there. Uh, another type of uh, shock type injury you'll see is a pulmonary contusion, um, bleeding, swelling in the alveoli, and uh, blood vessels within the lung. Not to mention concussion and traumatic brain injury. Um, these are your primary blast injuries. These are typically caused by the shock wave and the overpressure. So if you have a detonation inside a structure, you're going to see a lot more of these. Obviously, uh, thermobarics work so well in, inside structures because it's uh, increased blast. Uh, they don't work so well in open spaces. But, uh, you know, we see a lot, a lot of uh, things there. All right. Secondary injuries are fragmentation. Uh, we know how to deal with fragmentation. That is treated the same as bullets. Okay. We don't need to go too much in there. That's a propelled object. Fragmentation can be from the device itself, or it could be small. Uh, like, think, the glass. Glass blows out. That's going to penetrate, too. Uh, another thing that could be would be small, maybe like you're standing... Uh, the scene in Black Hawk Down when the RPG hits the wall. 
and all the rock goes everywhere because that's why they're throwing him to stay away from the wall. Same thing. That would be a type of secondary injury. A tertiary injury is caused by the displacement of air. Okay? Um, obviously, <laughs> with all that gas, has to go somewhere, and it's going to push the air around it out. And that can actually cause people to be, it's, it's called a blast wind. That can be thrown, throwing people into walls, uh, a lot of impact type injuries there. Uh, bone fractures, bruises, contusions, concussions, TBIs, a lot of stuff you can see from that. But it's typically impact related injuries. That's a tertiary injury. Uh, quaternary injury, which I guess is fourth tier, are various other injuries. Uh, you'll see crush injuries. Um, respiratory injuries like that, like uh, from inhaling fumes or whatever, like C4, uh, for one instance, puts off toxic fumes when it detonates. Uh, that's why a lot of guys got sick as shit using uh, burning C4 to heat their MR, their uh, C rats back in Vietnam. Uh, no, C4 won't explode when you set it on fire, but it burns like a mother. So, But it, it puts off a lot of nasty shit you don't want to breathe. That could, the Respiratory injuries from that could be one example of a quaternary injury. Um... Flash burns, you know, burns from the explosion. Uh, crush injuries, that could be something falling on them from the blast. Uh, and then any one of those uh, areas, you could have prime. Uh, you could have a prime. Looking at the eye, you could have a primary injury to the eye. Uh, that could be from the overpressure causing the globe of the eye to rupture. That has happened in the past in, the, in explosions. You could have a uh, primary injury, obviously, to the lungs or the GI tract, uh, or the heart. Uh, cardiac tamponade is caused by impact. That shock and overpressure is going to hit you. Um, that's what causes the, the blast lung and all that other stuff uh, associated. And obviously, if you can get a concussion or a TBI, you can certainly, cardiac tamponade would be basically a hit at a certain impact on the heart area that causes it to go into a crazy rhythm. That's the best way I can describe it without... It knocks it for a flip, basically. That's the best way I can describe it without getting too terrible technical and considerably above my pay grade. Uh, there are many, many areas you could have, you know, all four types of injuries to. But those are just the, the things to look out for. Um, and one thing that I see when looking at things is that some of these don't set in. Some of the uh, overpressure injuries and all don't really set in. Until a delayed time, I'm switching my notes now to uh, one from the CDC, which, and I'm looking at, I saw that they had some on, but I saw it, no, no, this one was on another set of notes I was looking at, but uh, anyway, one thing I saw was it's not uncommon to have people not, re not respond to having symptoms of some of these injuries for up to 48 hours. So I would imagine that, you know, we're probably going to see some more people going to hospitals, if we haven't already, that weren't there Monday. Um, you know, I hate it that this happened, but uh, one thing to take into account, let's look at what we can do. Uh, you know, get to know a doctor in your area or, or ER nurse or something like that. Most of them will have no problem explaining this to you better than, than I can. Uh, I've went to several courses, free courses, at local hospital dealing with some of this stuff. Uh, your hospital may put some of that together as well. Uh, if they do, you should certainly take advantage of it. Uh, what could we treat as an individual the easiest? Obviously, uh, the secondary injuries, the fragments. We can treat those just like we would any gunshot injury. So I would highly advise, and I'm probably, after reading some of this stuff, the medical kit that I carry in my car, I'm probably going to update some so it's not just a gunshot trauma kit. Because I'll be bluntly honest, I as much WMD training as I've had, you know, if you check our uh, Facebook page, you see a, a list of my certificates and stuff. And I've got a lot of uh, WMD type training from uh, Emertech, uh, the Department of Energy's Emergency Operations Training Academy, and a few other places. But, uh, you know, is, even though as much exposure as I've had to the systems, and the injuries that they can cause. I really didn't have much equipment to treat it, uh, much less the knowledge. So I'm certainly going to start uh, picking the brains of some of the doctors I know and see if there's there's anything that can even be done at the uh, the first responder non-EMT level. Uh, and I didn't say that should be done. I said that can be done. I'm not so much worried about the aid of others. I'm thinking self-aid or immediate buddy aid. Uh, that could be you know being a friend or whatever, um, or obviously self-aid if I'm still capable. But uh, you know, that's just something I would think about. But if you if you're not carrying medical kit, 
the Boston Marathon bombing shows that this can happen anywhere. I would certainly and highly, st very strongly advise you carrying medical kit. So, you know, this hasn't been the best video I've made, I'm sure, but, you know, I wanted to make sure I have my notes there so I didn't, you know, get too scatterbrained and confuse people. Uh, we're going to go over this one more time. A primary injury is typically caused by the blast. Typically affects the eyes, the ears, eyes, a lot of ear damage, a lot of inner ear damage uh, from blast effects. I forgot that earlier. Uh, it's going to affect the ears, the eyes, the respiratory tract, the gas field, inert, well, not really the inert, but the gas field type of organs, which would be the gastrointestinal tract, the lungs. Obviously, the eyes is a, is a, is a big one. Um, in any blast injury can also cause ruptured organs of anywhere, but those are the ones most commonly affected. Uh, secondary effects can be anywhere. Those are fragmentation injuries that can be treated, obviously, the same way we treat a gunshot wound or a knife wound. Okay? Uh, a tertiary injury is uh, I uh, and I lost my train of thought there. That, that's blast wind. That's impact type injuries being thrown, things like that. Uh, you've been thrown into a wall. Uh, you see a lot of bone fractures. CDC says any body part may affected. Close enough brain injury, fracture, and traumatic amputation. Uh, so there you go. Blast wind, a lot of impact stuff. Same thing that can happen when you get took down and you're fighting on the ground. So I don't like fighting on the ground if I can help it. And a quaternary is obviously any other injury that could be burns, uh, CDC list, burns, crust injuries, closing up, brain injury, asthma, COPD, uh, other breathing problems from dust, smoke, toxic fumes, angina, hyperglycemia, and uh, hypertension. So there's a lot of different things that could be a quaternary injury, but uh, basically it's any other injury that's not primary, secondary, or tertiary that is directly related to the blast. So keep those in mind. Uh, I would strongly suggest you do some more research on there, preferably by somebody who knows more about this shit than I do. But uh, just figured I'd throw that out there and get some discussion going. All right, y'all stay in the fight, stay safe, and uh, keep people of Boston in your prayers.